Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 where I have adapted the NASA model for the Chandra X-ray Space Telescope for Kerbal Space Program and I've redone the textures a little bit. Probably need to make it a little bit shinier judging from photographs but here it is. This is the largest payload that the shuttle ever launched with and in fact could only fit in Columbia because the other ones have the docking port for the ISS and for Mir. So um, that can't be there if you want to fit this space telescope plus the IUS, the stage that boosts it up. Uh, the IUS incidentally is from Raider Nix US rockets pack and then I've used Infernal Robotics here which may be causing a problem. We'll get to that later. First I'm going to cheat the space telescope into orbit to show you how it works and this will be part of my shuttle payloads pack. Right now the only other thing in there is the DFI, which is what was launched on STS-1, and uh, but I will be adding more payloads to it. So first of all, just Chandra. So just that. And everything should be right with it, except I have interpreted hydrazine and NTO as MMH and NTO, monomethyl hydrazine and NTO. <laughs> I've just used 0.5 as the mixture ratio between the two. So. You may have to forgive me for that. I kept it simple on the propellants. The whole thing comes in two parts. It's the main body of the telescope and then the thrusters are a separate part. Now of course I would have liked to just directly launch it into orbit with the space shuttle uh, to show you but I've been having a little bit of problem with that. So let's just uh, cheat it into orbit first. Okay here it is. And yeah, each of the little thrusters are an independent part. There's four of these. The RCS is built in. It's just these thrusters that are separate. They're 467 Newton thrusters. Okay, extend solar. And then that also opens the flap in the back and extends little antennae. And we can... It has a reaction wheel. And so if we turn prograde, it'll turn without me activating the RCS here. But it's not a feisty reaction wheel, of course. So it looks good up here. I think you'll agree. It's not that hefty. It's about, I think, 12 megabytes or something like that. Maybe less. Less than 12 megabytes. Okay, it's properly tracking. Everything looking good. And I'll activate these. If I activate the RCS, they're like that. I don't know why they positioned them the way they did, but they're there. <laughs> so, and then the thrusters. I've uh, already adjusted the plume size, so when you get it, it'll have a different plume size. Uh, with these little thrusters, it only has 540-something meters per second. Uh, most of the work to boost it up is done by the IUS, the inertial, uh, um, the inertial upper stage, right? Inertial upper stage. So this is actually the aperture. This is uh, the aperture for the telescope. I have no idea what the boxy thing at that end is. I, I don't know about the anatomy of this. I just adapted it, okay? So, it's working. That's the good thing. It works. Now, now for the problematic part. So I'd very much like to perform the mission and then talk about it. A lot of people have been talking about the mission on the 25th anniversary and how harrowing the launch was and stuff like that. Uh, and of course the fact that it was the largest payload, the heaviest payload that the shuttle launched is special. But, like I said, I've had some problems. First of all, some of them might be related to the fact that we're on an infernal robotics hinge, right? So the IUS has to be tilted up. It's tilted up 50 degrees like that, and then released. Now, whether we can do that properly or not is yet to be seen. Uh, using infernal robotics is always a little bit wobbly. I have decided to auto strut, auto strut to root part here, and then there's this one auto strut to grandparent part. Um, we've got little struts there. And of course there's still Kerbal joint reinforcement. But let, let's see what happens on launch. This, this should be interesting. <laughs> this has been interesting. I've tried it a few times, so that's why I wanted to show you. Okay, so here we go. This is not an abort test. Um, it really, really isn't, so I'm not trying to get any rid of any engines or anything like that. OPS-1 per normal. And for this mission, it, the shuttle did go out to 28.4 degrees, so as straight out as possible. 
got the engines upgraded to a newer version of the RS-25s, but you can see right away we lose the solar panels. You might have seen those panels dropping. The, now, in the configuration, I've got the solar panels set to, uh, the, there's a is breakable toggle, is set to false. <laughs> it's set to false. Why are they breaking? I don't know. But, but we just lost the panels. It doesn't say anything about that, though. So that's like problem number one. Now maybe the other problems aren't going to happen because it'll be just my luck that they won't occur when I'm recording, right? Now I added extra separatrons for the SRBs. So these are the separation motors. I removed the HTPV from those separation motors and then added uh, SRB nose cone is there and then these retro rockets. So that's what all those are. And then here we have the external tank and the uh, OMS engines. So what has previously happened is that some part from the space telescope has hit one of these engines and killed it on the way up. But I think we might be past the point where that happened. We're definitely past the point where that happened. So as it so happens when I'm recording it all ends up being safe. But the interesting thing is, okay, it killed the engine. Well, we've seen what happens there because we've had the aborts, right? Uh, but after the booster set, for reasons I don't understand. Okay, so there's booster set. Uh, when it was aborting, for reasons I don't understand, uh, after booster set, it would try to separate the external tank, and I don't know why. So, anyway. Well, this time it didn't do that. I just we've just lost the solar panels for some reason. So I have to figure that out. If somebody has a guess about why that might be happening, I would love to know. However, the part should work. The part is not, I think, the problem. And maybe it's wiggling too much in the bay initially. I mean, why would the solar panels break at all, right? And But it's right after launch. So I'm going to try one more thing, and that's to strut the body of the space telescope itself. The solar panels do have colliders on them, but maybe I should remove those. So yeah, I'm going to just add, go old fashioned and add struts. The problem with this is when we try to rotate it out of the bay, I'm worried that it might not like this. I mean, I'm sure they add plenty of hold downs for the telescope. Just how Kerbal's gonna deal with this. The hinge is locked right now. Let me just pe take a peek at it in the bay right now. It's not like already falling apart, is it? Maybe I should leave the doors open or something just to see. Well, it's like that right now. Okay, watch out for falling panels. There they go. They're already out. What is this? They're not a decoupler. I mean... Okay. Yeah, they're, they're just falling out like that. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Alright. I'm gonna use a different launcher. <laughs> just, just to see if they always fall off, okay? Okay, now we have some of these. Hey, we even have an IUS one. Alright, looks good to me. Seems so wrong. Chandra on the Titan 4. Well, I'm, I'm using an outdated launch script, so this might not go well. And it doesn't really matter a whole lot where we're launching from. Okay. Let's hope that old launch script from 2017 can handle this well it's rolling a lot but I think the solar panels are still okay okay I can fix the roll thing hold on let's just do that but I'm willing to bet the booster timing is off right now because like the fuels have all changed and there's residuals and stuff like that so so that's the problem. But yeah, no no apparent loss of solar panels. We'll see when once we get to orbit, if we get to orbit. 
Off we go with Titan 4. It was after the Challenger disaster that they decided to restart the Titan and Delta stuff. Originally all the payloads would have gone on the shuttle, you see. But after Challenger that shed some doubt because that was a lot of downtime after Challenger before return to flight. And so they restarted the Delta and Titan lines to make up for that. Okay. Well, the boosters are uh, going out a little bit earlier than I was than the script anticipated, clearly. Definitely. Yeah, but that would make sense for a residual situation. Or maybe I've just got the wrong Titan. There is Titan 4A and 4B. Oh, no, but you, you don't need to shut off. Oh, but then we can't make orbit, can we? Okay. But the point is, the solar panels are still there. And in fact, at this altitude, we can extend them. Oh, and, well, that little flap will extend too, yeah. That will happen. So... But it's not on an infernal robotics hinge, right? So, there's that. It's not on, a, on an infernal robotics hinge. But I tried strutting it as much as I possibly could, and I did lock the hinge. Technically, if it's in the shuttle bay, it shouldn't be colliding with anything in the same craft, right? So this is the state of the problem. <laughs> so this, this is my problem. I need to be able to launch this in the shuttle. Sure, we could probably get to where it's going using Titan or... Okay, well that staging was wrong. That, that was... That, that was... yeah. Okay, anyway. I'll fix the launch script for Titan for later. But, yes. Pressing problem, we need to be able to launch this in the shuttle. So... I don't know what to do about that yet. But I will offer you guys the part in the video description. There will be a link to Shuttle Payloads version 0.1, the very initial version of this mod, and I'll add other Shuttle Payloads later on. So there you go. Chandra Space Telescope. The model was by NASA, and specifically uh, the model is from Brian Kumanchik at uh, JPL Caltech. So credit where it's due, and I touched up the textures and of course made it compatible with Kerbal Space Program and did the animations. It didn't come with animations. So yeah, that was my part. With that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.